Let's learn about logarithmic functions and their graphs. We are in section 4.2. So exponential functions are one-to-one, -one, which means they pass the horizontal line test. Therefore, their inverses pass the vertical line test. Inverses of exponential functions are called logarithmic functions. So exponential and log functions. Okay, so remember exponential functions. We're going to call this g of x for exponential, is going to be some number raised to the x. Your x is in the exponent. The f of x, which is going to be our log function, we're going to have a log of x. And we're going to say that our log base a, so a can be any number. So these are inverses of each other. Generate a table of values for the function by interchanging x and y on the inverse of each. Then sketch the graph of the function. So we are going to look at log base 2 of x. Let's first look at the g of x. That's going to be our exponential function. This is going to be 2 raised to the x. So we can make a table of values by doing that. 2 raised to the negative 2 is 1 fourth because it's 2 squared on the denominator. 1 raised to the negative 1 is 1 over 2. So we're going to say this g of x equals 2 raised to the x. And then anything to the 0 power is 1. 2 raised to the first is 2. 2 squared is 4. So when we graph these, we have 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4. And then it looks like this. So I could draw that like that. So this is my g of x. It's going to be my exponential function. And what an inverse function actually does is it reflects across y equals x. So y equals x is this diagonal. So it's going to reflect across that. So our new function is going to be the opposite, the inverse. So we are going to do log base 2 of x. All we have to do is switch x and y in the table and then graph them. So we'll have 1 fourth is negative 2, 1 half is negative 1, 1 is 0, 2 is 1, and 4 is 2. So I just did a little flip-flop there. So when I graph it, 1, 0, 2, 1, 4, 2. And then we have half is negative 1, half is negative 1, fourth is negative 2, something like that. So it's going to look like this. So those are inverses of each other. Okay, let's look at the asymptote. We're, we're only going to look at this first one first. So asymptote, we're going to do, see how it has an E here? So that's our exponential, L for log. So this is our g of x function. So the asymptote is the line that it doesn't cross, which we know this from 4.1. It is going to be y equals 0. It's going to be this line right here. y equals 0. See how the blue line doesn't cross it? So y equals 0. Okay, asymptote of our g of x is y equals 0. Asymptote of our f of x, let's find that. So our f of x. Okay, so that is the opposite. It's going to be this line. It's going to be x equals 0. Okay, domain. Domain of the g of x. 
it goes left and right to infinity so it is all real numbers or we can say negative infinity to positive infinity okay the range so we're still dealing with the exponential so the range is our y values so if we look at our y values it doesn't cross y equals zero so it's at zero and goes to infinity so that is our range zero and goes to infinity Okay, let's do the domain of the log function. So this is our f of x. So our domain is our x's. So see how it does not cross this asymptote right here? So it's going to start at 0 and go to infinity. And then our range. Our range is our y's. It goes down to infinity and it continues to go up. So it's negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so what you'll see is for inverses, our domain of our exponential is the same as our range of our log. And you'll also see that your asymptotes are perpendicular to each other. So see the yellow one and the orange one, they're perpendicular to each other. So we're going to write those two observations down. Asymptotes are perpendicular to each other. And then domain of exponential is the range of the log. All right, so what I want you to, what we'll do is we will do these in class. So we'll leave those as in class. And let's go to describing the transformations. So this is similar to all the other transformations that we've done. So see how these have the same log, log base two of X, log base two of X plus three. So the only transformation was done here. And that's our crazy X inside the parentheses with the X. It does the opposite of what you think it does. And it's our horizontal transformation. So this is going to go left, 3. Okay, log base 10 of x is, I'm going to rewrite this as negative log base 10 of x minus 4. So this negative, that's going to do our vertical reflection, reflection across the x-axis. x-axis axis there we go and then outside the parentheses is this minus four so that means it goes down four it's our vertical shift okay the next one i'm going to rewrite this is log base six of x plus five i'm going to put the plus two so our change is the crazy X, so it goes left, 5, and then the vertical is up, 2. Okay, sketch the graph of each, state the domain, and the vertical asymptote. Okay, so we are going to do a transformation based on our parent function. So I'm going to draw that parent function here. The parent function, I'm going to change my color real quick. The parent function, our asymptote is at y equals 0. No, x equals 0. And 
then it's at this point one comma zero and it looks like this that is our linear parent function not our linear I'm so used to saying that that is our parent function for log functions so we're going to base all of our function that we're drawing on this one Okay, so we have log base 2 of x minus 3. So this minus 3 tells us it's our crazy x, so it goes right 3. So if our original point for our parent function is at 1, 0, it's going to have to go right 3. 1, 2, 3. So our new point is going to be right here. And so our asymptote is right there at x equals 1, 2, 3. And it's going to look the same because that was the only transformation we had. So our domain, which is our x's, goes from 3 to infinity. Our vertical asymptote, we already decided, was x equals 3. Okay, let's go to the next one. We have 1 minus log base 5 of x. So we're going to rewrite this as log base 5 of x. Oh, it's negative because that negative needs to go with it, plus 1. So the plus 1, we know it's going to go up 1. So instead of it being at 1, 0, it's going to be 1, 0. It's going to be at 1, 1. 1, 1 is where the point's going to be because it went up 1. And I'm basing it on this point right here. Okay. And then this negative is going to be a reflection across the x-axis. So if our normal one kind of looks like this, then the reflection is going to look like this because it's reflecting across the x. So that is what it's going to look like. Oh, I didn't draw that on the bottom, so I did it wrong. I need to make sure to come down here. There we go. Because if our original is above, see how it went opposite, it went like this, there we go. So it needs to go below the x-axis. Okay, so our asymptote is at x equals zero, that's going to stay the same, because it didn't go left or right, it only went up and it was reflected, so it's going to stay the same. Our domain is going to be 0 to infinity. Because it can't go past our vertical asymptote. And that's at 0. 0 to infinity for our domain, for the x's. Okay, and we'll do this last one in class.